Dear audience, after considering the properties of epithelial tissues, we proceed to the study of the second very diverse group of tissues, connective and supporting tissues. Connective tissues account for more than 50% of human body weight. They participate in the formation of dermis, skeleton, the internal carcass or stroma of organs, and fill the spaces between them. The interstitial fluid of connective tissues provides metabolic support for cells, being a medium for diffusion of nutrients and waste products. Unlike other tissue types, epithelium, muscle, and nerve tissues, which are composed mainly of cells, the quantitatively predominant component of connective tissues is the extracellular matrix. The diversity of connective tissue types in the body is due to differences in the composition and quantity of cells and intercellular substance, which together are responsible for the amazing structural, functional, and pathological diversity of connective tissues. In general, this group of tissues provides the processes of maintaining the constancy of the internal environment of the organism, denoted by the term homeostasis. The tissues included in it perform transport, trophic, protective, supportive and plastic functions. Therefore, in Russian scientific literature, the term tissues of the internal environment is widely used to designate it as a synonym. All tissues of the internal environment share common properties. Firstly, they contain various specialized cells as the main element of the tissue and well-defined extracellular matrix, which has a different chemical composition and structure depending on the type of tissue. The extracellular matrix contains fibers and a ground or amorphous substance. Secondly, all cellular elements of this tissue group have a common embryonic origin. They develop from mesenchyme. Mesenchyme, or embryonic connective tissue, is formed by loosely arranged, branched, poorly differentiated cells and a gelatinous intercellular substance. Mesenchyme lies everywhere between germ layers and axial organs of the embryo. Mesenchymal cells develop predominantly from the mesodermal primordium. Small mesenchymal cells with their processes form a meshwork and participate in the nutrition of all embryonic structures. Embryonic mesenchyme gives rise to the fibrous connective tissues, smooth muscle tissue, blood, lymph, hematopoietic organs, blood and lymph vessels. The entire diversity of tissues of the internal environment can be represented in the form of a classification. The criteria for assigning tissues to different groups are the features of cellular composition, structure of intercellular substance, functional specialization, and localization of tissues in the organism. The system of connective and supporting tissues includes hematopoietic tissues, connective tissues proper, and supporting connective tissues. Hematopoietic tissues are present in hematopoietic organs, where blood and lymphatic formed elements are produced and differentiated. Connective tissues proper are the most widely represented in the organism, varying in the ratio of the basic amorphous substance and fibers, as well as the orientation of fibers in the intercellular substance. Within this group, loose, and dense fibrous connective tissues are distinguished, as well as connective tissues with special properties adipose, reticular, and mucous tissues. Supporting connective tissues are characterized by a high density of intercellular substance and form the organism's skeleton, hence also called skeletal. They are subdivided into three types of cartilaginous tissue, hyaline, elastic, fibrous, and two types of bone tissue, reticular fibrous and lamella, as well as cement and dentin of the tooth. The diversity of cell specializations in the tissues of the internal environment underlies the maintenance of their basic functions. Transport and trophic functions provide nourishment to cells throughout the body, supply them with oxygen, and remove metabolic waste products. 
The protective function is manifested in the phagocytic activity of cells. Lymphocytes provide immunological protection against foreign proteins. An important role in ensuring the protective function of connective tissues belongs to the intercellular substance. The latter provides the stability of the organism and organs to external mechanical influences, for example, collagen fibers of dense connective tissue in the skin and fibrous capsules in a number of internal organs, and the amorphous substance possesses bactericidal properties. The plastic function involves the elimination of tissue defects caused by various damaging factors such as injuries, infections, intoxications, and circulatory disorders. The cellular elements of hematopoietic tissues and loose connective tissue actively participate in providing this function. Tissues specialized in performing transport, trophic, plastic and protective functions, blood, lymph, reticular tissue, loose connective tissue, adipose tissue, are characterized by a predominance of liquid and amorphous components in the intercellular substance and a wide variety of cells. The biomechanical function includes the formation and maintenance of the skeleton, the body's framework, and stroma, framework of internal organs, throughout the organism's life. For tissue specialized in performing this function, dense connective tissue, cartilage, and bone tissues, a predominance of numerous fibers in the intercellular substance, matrix mineralization, and a limited variety of cell composition are characteristic. All cells of connective tissues in the body after birth can be classified into two groups. Firstly, these are the permanent or resident cells, developing from mesenchymal stem cells of red bone marrow or their undifferentiated progeny. Primarily, these are different types of fibroblasts, adventitial cells, pericytes, as well as adipose tissue cells. The second group comprises transient cell populations that migrate into connective tissue from the blood as needed in response to specific stimuli. Macrophages, lymphocytes, plasma cells, mast cells and neutrophils originate from hematopoietic stem cells of the bone marrow, circulate in the blood and then move into connective tissue where they perform their various functions for a short period of time and then die by apoptosis. Different combinations and densities of the cells, fibers, and other extracellular matrix components produce graded variations in histological structure within connective tissues. Connective tissue proper is widespread in the body. It is divided into two general types, fibrous connective tissues and special connective tissues. Fibrous tissues broadly classified as loose or dense, terms that refer to the amount of collagen present. Loose connective tissue is common, forming a layer beneath the epithelial lining of many organs and filling the spaces between fibers of muscle and nerve. Also called areolar tissue, the loose connective tissue typically contains cells, fibers, and ground substance in roughly equal parts. The most numerous cells are fibroblasts, but the other types of connective tissue cells, macrophages, lymphocytes, plasma cells, and mast cells, are also normally found. Collagen fibers predominate, but elastic and reticular fibers are also present. With at least a moderate amount of ground substance, loose connective tissue has a delicate consistency. It is flexible and not very resistant to stress. Fibroblasts are the leading cells of connective tissues. They ensure the formation of all types of intercellular substance, restructuring and partial destruction of the intercellular substance, thereby regulating its architecture. In addition, fibroblasts produce humoral factors that implement intercellular interactions both in connective tissue and with cellular elements of other tissues. As a result, fibroblasts can regulate inflammatory processes, participate in wound healing, and tissue regeneration.
The extracellular matrix is produced by resident cells belonging to fibroblast populations and contains fibers and a ground or amorphous substance. The fibrous component of connective tissues is represented by collagen, elastic, and reticular fibers. Collagen fibers are formed by fibrillar proteins, have high strength, and are practically non-stretchable. They bundle together, defining the architecture and mechanical properties of connective tissue. There are 29 types of collagen, distinguished by molecular organization, organ, and tissue specificity. However, 90% of all collagen in the human body is represented by type 1 collagen. Elastic fibers are formed by elastin and fibrillin proteins, branching and anastomosing with each other, providing the connective tissue with the ability for reversible deformation. Reticular fibers are stained with silver salts, hence also called argyrophilic. These fibers are most characteristic of hematopoietic organs, red bone marrow, lymph nodes, spleen. They form three-dimensional networks, provide support, and create optimal environment for the developing blood cells. Ground or amorphous substance is constituted by macromolecular complexes of proteolicans and glycoproteins. It fills spaces between cells and fibers, participates in exerting the transport, trophic, and sustentacular function. The term fibroblast is applied to relatively young cells that actively produce extracellular substance and are capable of division. The highly differentiated, low active form of fibroblasts is usually referred to as fibrocyte. Mature fibroblasts are cells about 20 micrometers in size and have a spindle-shaped, often star-shaped, light-colored nucleus with one or two nuclei and a weakly basophilic cytoplasm. The cytoplasm of the fibroblast is clearly divided into a denser, intensely stained endoplasm containing the nucleus and most biosynthetic organelles, and a light ectoplasm that forms processes and is primarily formed by the cytoskeleton, microfilaments consisting of contractile proteins like actin and myosin. The support motor system of fibroblasts provides their mobility, shape change, and attachment to the substrate in culture. The ability of cells to move on a solid surface using pseudopodia can be observed in accelerated filming of lung fibroblast cultures. At the ultrastructural level, fibroblasts contain a well-developed granular endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi complex, which ensure the synthesis of the main components of the extracellular matrix, as well as lysosomes, mitochondria, lipid inclusions, and glycogen. The cytoskeleton is clearly expressed. The plasma membrane of fibroblasts is an important receptor zone through which the effects of various regulatory factors on fibroblasts are realized. Activation of fibroblasts is usually accompanied by glycogen accumulation and increased activity of hydrolytic enzymes. The energy generated during glycogen breakdown is used by the cell for the synthesis of polypeptides and other organic components. Let's consider the mechanisms of biosynthetic activity of fibroblasts using the example of their formation of collagen fibers. This process is referred to as fibrillogenesis. The biosynthesis of collagen fibers occurs in two stages. The intracellular stage involves the biosynthesis of procollagen molecules on the membranes of the granular endoplasmic reticulum, packaging of molecules in the Golgi complex, transport in secretory vesicles to the plasma membrane and their release from the cell through the mechanism of exocytosis. The dynamics of synthetic processes are demonstrated in real-time intracellular transport of labeled procollagen precursors, which are stained green.
The extracellular stage begins with the modification of procollagen molecules by specific enzymes, proteases, leading to the formation of insoluble tropocollagen capable of self-assembly into fibrillar structures. Polymerization of tropocollagen molecules occurs in the extracellular matrix, sequentially leading to the formation of collagen fibrils and fibers of necessary sizes. The high proliferative activity of fibroblasts, their ability to effectively maintain the stroma and quickly fill areas of defects with newly formed connective tissue, are explained by the simultaneous existence of three main sources of their formation in the adult organism. The development of fibroblasts is most clearly described on the basis of the concept of cell differin, denoting a histogenetic series or group of cells developing from stem cells of the same type. The key elements of the fibroblastic differin are mesenchymal stromal stem cells of red bone marrow, perivascular semine stem cells, and mature fibroblasts. Perivascular semine stem cells are descendants of mesenchymal stromal stem cells fixed in the walls of small blood vessels, capillaries, arterioles, and venules. This category includes adventitial cells and parasites. Parasites are fixed cells located between the basal membrane layers of the endothelium of blood capillaries. Adventitial cells are localized outside the vessel, have a spindle-shaped form, elongated hyperchromatic nucleus, weakly basophilic cytoplasm, and are mobile. Thus, an increase in the number of fibroblasts is possible through the proliferation and accelerated differentiation of mesenchymal stromal stem cells, cambial perivascular or progenitor cells, as well as through the proliferation of mature fibroblasts. In conditions of physiological and reparative regeneration, each of these mechanisms can be activated to the necessary extent and at the right time. Most fibroblasts are destroyed during life processes, while the remaining ones transform into a less active mature form, fibrocytes. A significant portion of the mature fibroblasts that have formed perish in the course of their life processes, while the remaining ones continue to differentiate into terminal forms of fibroblastic differentiation, fibrocytes, fibroplasts, and myofibroblasts. A fibrocyte is a slender spindle-shaped cell incapable of proliferation, with long thin processes. The cytoplasm of a fibrocyte contains a poorly developed synthetic apparatus, a significant amount of autophagosomes, and lipofuscin granules. Fibrocytes have low biosynthetic activity and contribute to maintaining the stability of the extracellular matrix. Fibroclasts are cells specialized in breaking down the extracellular matrix. Numerous phagosomes and lysosomes containing lytic enzymes capable of breaking down all types of proteins in the extracellular matrix are identified in their cytoplasm. Fibroclasts provide restructuring and involution of connective tissue. They are particularly numerous in young granulation tissue and scars undergoing regression. Myofibroblasts contain numerous microfilaments composed of contractile proteins such as actin and myosin. Myofibroblasts actively participate in reparative processes. By contracting, they pull the edges of the wound together and reduce its size. These cells are found in large numbers in young regenerating connective tissue and scars.
The main phagocytic elements of connective tissues are macrophages, which are part of the specialized defense system of the body known as the macrophage system or mononuclear phagocyte system. All elements of this system develop from bone marrow hematopoietic stem cells that differentiate into monocyte lineage cells. When entering tissues under the influence of microenvironment factors, monocytes differentiate into specialized types of cells with macrophage activity. The key peripheral elements of this system include macrophages of loose connective tissue, macrophages of bone and cartilage tissues, bone marrow macrophages, spleen and lymph nodes macrophages, inflammatory exudate macrophages, alveolar macrophages of the lungs, microlia of the central nervous system. The characteristics of the structure and function of specialized macrophages from different organs will be studied in the private histology course. Let us consider the properties of macrophages on the example of histiocytes, free cells of loose connective tissue, the second largest population after fibroblasts. Histiocytes are formed directly from monocytes after their migration into connective tissue from the lumen of blood vessels. Monocytes circulate in the blood for up to 104 hours. While in tissues, macrophages can live for 40 to 60 days. Depending on their functional state, histiocytes are classified into resting state, small flattened cells with a dark nucleus and poorly developed organelles, and activated, wandering macrophages. The latter become mobile, their cytoplasm contains numerous lysosomes and forms a system of pseudopods. The plasma membrane contains numerous cytokine receptors and other biologically active substances released during inflammation. The accelerated video recording of cell culture shows the process of macrophage engulfing red blood cells. Active macrophages can revert to an inactive phase, but mostly perish through apoptosis and are phagocytized by neighboring macrophages. In areas of inflammation, histiocytes can merge into giant multinuclear cells or foreign body giant cells. In the loose connective tissue of mucus and serous membranes, in addition to fibroblasts and macrophages, lymphocytes and plasma cells are constantly encountered. Their presence reflects the development of immune reactions in these areas, providing protection for the body against foreign proteins or antigens. Lymphocytes, the principal cells of the immune system, are constantly found in the loose connective tissue of the mucous membranes beneath the epithelium and form the first line of defense against antigens entering the body through the epithelial barriers. Lymphocytes are diffusely distributed or can form nodules of different sizes. In areas where lymphocytes accumulate, foreign proteins are captured from the organ lumen and local immune reaction develops. Its result is the production of antibodies or immunoglobulins by plasma cells. Plasma cells, or plasmocytes, develop from activated clones of B lymphocytes and are specialized in producing antibodies. They are round cells with a diameter from 9 to 20 micrometers, featuring basophilic cytoplasm and a light area near the nucleus. The cytoplasm of plasma cells contains numerous cisterns of the granular endoplasmic reticulum and a well-developed Golgi complex. The synthesized immunoglobulins do not accumulate within the cells but are continuously released from them through exocytosis. A more detailed analysis of the cellular mechanisms of immune reactions will be the subject of a separate lecture.
the key cellular elements that ensure the trophic function of connective tissues are tissue basophils or mast cells. They develop from hematopoietic stem cells in the blood and make up to 10% of the cells in loose connective tissue. Tissue basophils are located near blood vessels, have irregular shapes, compact nuclei, and contain numerous large basophilic granules in the cytoplasm. The granules include heparin, histamine, serotonin, and prostaglandins. These biologically active substances influence the permeability of blood vessel walls, blood clotting, and the speed of local blood flow. In addition to regulating metabolic processes, the secretory products of tissue basophils participate in the development of allergic reactions and regulate the functions of other connective tissue cells at the microregional level, known as paracrine regulation. The process of granule exocytosis, triggered by specific stimuli and referred to as degranulation, can be clearly observed in mast cell cultures. In addition to monocytes, the source of histiocytes, other blood cells, neutrophilic granulocytes or neutrophils, actively participate in phagocytosis of microorganisms that have entered the connective tissue. Neutrophils contain primary granules, lysosomes, and secondary, specific, granules in their cytoplasm, which contain bactericidal substances. After circulating in the blood for 6 to 10 hours, neutrophils migrate into the connective tissue where they live for 6 to 8 days. During this period, from 70 to 99% of cells acquire the ability to phagocytize and the number of microbes engulfed by one cell reaches from 10 to 20. This process can be reproduced in cell culture, as shown in the video clip. The appearance of a focus of septic inflammation stimulates the massive migration of neutrophils from capillaries, resulting in the formation of an inflammatory infiltrate. Neutrophils in the area of damage provide phagocytosis of bacteria and wound cleansing. Some neutrophils disintegrate, releasing a large amount of lysosomal enzymes and bactericidal factors into the focus of inflammation. The accumulation of dead neutrophils Decay products of microorganisms and damaged tissues manifests as the formation of pus which either drains from the wound or is absorbed by dressing materials. Dense connective tissue has similar components as loose connective tissue but with fewer cells, mostly fibroblasts, and a clear predominance of bundle type 1 collagen fibers over ground substance. The abundance of collagen here protects organs and strengthens them structurally. In dense irregular connective tissue, bundles of collagen fibers appear randomly interwoven, with no definite orientation. The tough three-dimensional collagen network provides resistance to stress from all directions. Examples of dense irregular connective tissue include the deep dermis layer of skin and capsules surrounding most organs. Dense regular connective tissue consists mostly of type 1 collagen bundles and fibroblasts aligned in parallel for great resistance to prolonged or repeated stresses from the same direction. The best examples of dense regular connective tissue are the very strong and flexible tendons, 
cords connecting muscles to bones, aponeuroses, and ligaments. Fibrocytes with elongated nuclei lie parallel to the collagen fibers of dense regular connective tissue with cytoplasmic folds enveloping portions of the collagen bundle. Collagen bundles vary in size in different tendons and ligaments, but all regular connective tissue structures are poorly vascularized and repair of damage in this tissue is usually slow. The sources of regeneration in this case are poorly differentiated cellular elements of loose connective tissue interlayers within tendons and ligaments, denoted as endotendon. After studying the structure and function of fibrous connective tissues, let's look at the properties of special connective tissues, adipose, reticular, and mucous tissues. Connective tissue in which fat storing cells or adipocytes predominate is called adipose tissue. These large cells are typically found isolated or in small groups within loose or dense irregular connective tissue but occur in large aggregates in adipose tissue or fat in many organs and body regions. Adipose tissue normally represents from 15 to 20 percent of the body weight in men, somewhat more in women. Adipose tissue is involved in lipid deposition and mobilization. Besides serving as storage depots for neutral fats, chiefly triglycerides, adipocytes function as key regulators of the body's overall energy metabolism. They perform energy, support, protective, insulating, and endocrine functions. Adipose tissue consists of adipocytes, an extracellular matrix which is similar to the matrix of the loose connective tissue. Adipocytes arise from the mesenchyme in the embryogenesis. In post-embryonic development, they differentiate from the adventitial cells. There are two types of adipocytes and accordingly, two types of adipose tissue, white and brown. White adipose tissue is distributed everywhere in the body, in subcutaneous adipose tissue, mesenteric omentum, retroperitoneum. Clusters of fat cells are often found on slices of many human organs. Adipocytes are large, round cells containing one large vacuole of lipids. Their cytoplasm is compressed into a thin rim and the nucleus bulges out on one side. After standard histological processing, the fat cells appear empty because the lipid was dissolved during slide preparation. The white adipocytes are organized in groups called lobules. The lobules are separated by septa of loose connective tissue conducting blood vessels and nerves. Brown adipocytes are slightly smaller and characteristically contain many small lipid droplets and central spherical nuclei. The brown tissue color is due to the high concentration of cytochromes in the abundant mitochondria. The vascular supply is very rich. Each cell is approached by three to five blood capillaries. Brown adipose tissue serves as a generator of heat and participates in thermoregulation. In humans, it is found during the first year of life, where it is located in the axillae, in the fat pad of the kidneys, and in the triangle of the neck. Reticular tissue is characterized by abundant fibers of type 3 collagen forming a delicate network that supports various types of cells. This collagen is also known as reticulin and is produced by modified, often called reticular cells, which remain associated with the fibers and partially cover them. The star-shaped reticular cells and reticular fibers form a complex network through which interstitial fluid or lymph and wandering cells from blood pass continuously. Reticular tissue provides a microenvironment for the development of hematopoietic cells within the bone marrow, lymph nodes, and spleen. Mucus or gelatinous connective tissue is the main component of the fetal umbilical cord. The mucus tissue, which contains a large amount of basic substance consisting mainly of hyaluron, has a gelatinous structure with sparse collagen fibers and scattered fibroblasts. Histologically, the mucous connective tissue largely resembles embryonic mesenchyme and is rarely found in adult organs, 
it is similar to the tissue contained in the vitreous chambers of the eye and the pulp cavities of young teeth. Included among the fibroblastic cells are many mesenchymal stem cells which are being studied for their potential in regenerative medicine. Dear students, in this lecture, we have examined the general properties of the tissues of the internal environment of our organism, as well as the structural elements and functions of the main varieties of connective tissues proper. We have had an excellent opportunity to evaluate a wide range of differences in the composition and quantity of cells, fibers, and ground substance, which together determine the remarkable diversity of connective tissues under both physiological conditions and in the development of various pathological processes. Stay with us for new our next meetings on the Histonavigator channel.